Hi everyone, in this video I'll be answering your questions. Nathan and Michael ask how I'm getting on with my new timber storage shelving. That was featured in a video which I'll link to below. It's been absolutely brilliant, I'm thrilled with it to be honest. I have been tracking the moisture in the air recently in that space and it fluctuates quite a lot. I've seen it be as low as 40% and as high as 80%. But whenever I've checked the moisture content of the wood itself that's stored in that space, it's been surprisingly low, so I think it's working really well. Matthew Barrett is an 18 year old uni student who doesn't really have space to do any woodworking but wants to get involved. So a couple of ideas, you could try contacting your local men's shed. Men's sheds are all over the UK and they are open to anyone over the age of 18. Men's sheds are community facilities designed to help combat isolation and loneliness in men, but also to help men that don't have access to a shed or a workshop. If you'd prefer to work independently, then perhaps invest in a set of cordless tools and a workbench and see if you can find a space outside that you can use. That's how I got started many years ago before I built my first workshop, but it is pretty dependent on the weather. Chris asks, what is my favorite tool that I couldn't live without? Uh, to be honest, I try not to feel sentimental about tools because they are just tools, but I do have a record number five hand plane that once belonged to my granddad who passed away a few years ago, so that one's probably my favorite tool. Actually, I've just been using it this morning. I'm not sure if you can see it over there on the workbench. Jeff asks what music I like listening to in the workshop. To be honest, recently I've just been putting the radio on mostly. I don't like working in silence. It helps me to have some music on. The radio station I've been listening to recently is Capital Extra Reloaded. Uh, they play a lot of 90s R&B music, which for some reason I'm just enjoying at the moment. But in terms of my favorite music, I thought I'd write a list of my top 10 albums, but that ended up being a list of about 65 albums. Then I managed to whittle that down to about 30 albums. And then finally I whittled it down to about 16 albums. So yeah, this is pretty much my favorite music. The Big AL99 asks if I could buy any tool tomorrow, what would it be? Probably a drum sander because I hate sanding. G-Rock asks if money and time could let me choose between power or hand tool woodworking, what would I choose? That's a tricky one, but I can't imagine not using any power tools, so I would probably have to go with power tools, but I would definitely miss my scrapers, hand planes, and chisels. Mark G asks if I've ever hurt myself with a power tool. I've never had a serious accident with a power tool, but I've certainly picked up my fair share of cuts and scrapes. He also asks, what's the worst injury you've had? That would definitely be a chisel injury as a result of bad chiseling technique. And I'm pretty much scarred for life on my little finger. I'll show you that here. I don't know if you can see that there, but yeah, two or three years ago, I put a chisel right through my little finger. I didn't go to hospital or anything and it healed up okay in the end. Hannibal Smith asks what type of push stick I prefer. When I started out using the table saw, I always preferred using two of these style of push sticks. That was up until I tried this style of push stick, which I much prefer and I've been using solidly for the last two or three years. Oliver asks if I'm considering building a router table. Yes, I definitely am. I do have one at the moment, but I don't really like it. I want to build something that's part of my central table saw workbench area, but that's on hold until I figure out what table saw I want to use going forward. Matt and Gordon ask about identifying the species of wood. Um, check out the online wood database. I'll leave a link to that below. But I think a lot of it comes with experience as you get to learn the different color, appearance, weight, even smell of the wood. I'm no expert though, and there's plenty of wood that I use that I just haven't got a clue what it is. Alexander asks if I can make a video on where I find all of my wood. Graham then followed up with a link to a video where I did just that. But that video is quite old now, and I would like to make an updated version. I will leave a link to it down below. But yeah, stay tuned because I want to make an updated version for people that don't have access to things like skips, alleyways, and all of the communal bins and stuff that I had access to at my old house. Leighton, Pauline and Fergus all ask about finding salvage materials in a more rural area since I moved home. It's definitely a lot trickier. In the city there were skips everywhere, communal bins and alleyways to hunt in. Out here in the country there are none of those things but there are still ways to find things. Big Pete asks if I use a saw sharpener or do I just toss my jack saws? I've never actually had to sharpen one but I would like to try one day. Robert Tucker asks what's the best scrap wood find you've made? I would probably have to say the oak hat and coat stands. They were all destined to end up in a skip at my place of work so I'm really glad I managed to salvage those and some of you will know how many projects they've featured in now. It's been quite a lot. But also a few years back in my first ever vlog video, I documented how I found some oak and mahogany 
from a church refurbishment locally to where I lived. That was an incredible find and I've still got a lot of that wood left over. Jack asks what kind of screws I use. I mainly just use posi drive screws, just the cheapest ones that I can find. Joel, Matt and Eric the Viking all ask about what I plan to do in upgrading my table saw. After doing lots of research, the one I'd like to upgrade to is the iTech 01332. That was actually recommended to me by someone commenting on my video, so thank you for that. But unfortunately, I really can't afford to spend that kind of money on a table saw at the moment. But I do have some news. A table saw is currently being sent to me by a tool company that I've been speaking with recently. So I'm gonna wait until that one arrives and see how I enjoy using it. I'm not in any hurry to upgrade the table saw. The DeWalt that I have at the moment does everything I need it to. The main issue I had with it in the past was how noisy it was, but that's not an issue here anymore because I'm next to a really busy road in a fully insulated workshop, so my neighbors can't hear me anyway. But anyway, I'm definitely excited about trying the new table saw that's on its way to me. I don't wanna tell you what that is yet because I thought I'd keep it as a surprise. Mark asks how I deal with taxes if I build objects for someone else. Here in the UK, we pay tax on all income, so I have to pay tax on my YouTube ad revenue, Patreon donations, if I do commissions for clients, all of that stuff gets taxed. So towards the end of every financial year, I have to do a tax return, and I've always done it myself up until this point, but this year there are some extra complications of tax stuff that I don't really understand. So I am actively looking for an accountant at the moment. If anyone knows anyone locally to me in Norwich or Norfolk, I'd really appreciate you dropping me an email. Sam asks about any videos on how to turn scrap wood into toilet paper. That's actually already been done by Rob Cosman. I'll link to that video in the description box below. Chris and I told you so ask what tool I wish I would have spent more money on or what is the worst tool that I've bought. Definitely a Ryobi belt sander, the EBS 800 that I bought a few years ago. I bought it new and I can't have used it more than three or four times until something started rattling on the inside and bits started falling off it. I was really disappointed with that. I think I spent about 80 quid on it. Generally though, I think there are a lot of tools that you can cheap out on and get good results with, but the belt sander isn't one of them. I've been through so many cheap belt sanders over the years. So if you need one, I'd recommend spending a bit of extra money if you can afford to. The ones I've got at the moment are the Bosch PBS 75. That's been really good. I haven't had any issues with that so far. And I've also got a larger 100 mil one sent to me by Hikoki, and that's been fine too, although it's seen very little use so far, so time will tell. I've also heard really good things about the Makita. I can't remember the model number, but I'll put it on screen now. Apparently it's built like a tank and lasts forever. Another tool I actually regret buying is my Merca D-Ross Random Orbit Sander, which feels weird to say that because it's one of my favorite tools to use, but it's proven to be unreliable and for that reason, I do regret buying it. I told you so also asks about the tool that I've bought but never used. I wouldn't say never used, but my router table I think I've had for about four years and I think I've used it twice, maybe three times. Billy asks what tool scares me the most. Definitely the router table. I'm fine with a handheld router, but when it's mounted upside down in a table and my hands are precariously close to that spinning bit, it's terrifying, I don't like it at all. It just sometimes feels quite grabby and unpredictable and like a kickback is not so far away on the horizon. I think I just need more practice and experience using them. Joseph asked, have I had a chance to use those waxes posted on Instagram a while back? I think Joseph's probably referring to this set of hard wax sticks that I bought a while back and actually, no, I haven't used them yet. Um, I haven't been doing much furniture restoration recently just because I've been so busy with other things, but I do have a couple of restoration videos coming up, so I might be using them then, but time will tell. To be honest, I pretty much bought them on a whim after watching loads of Thomas Johnson videos because he uses them all the time and they look really handy. Rubens Woodcraft asks roughly where I'm located and do I have anywhere local to get exotic timber from? I'm in North Norfolk in the UK and there is a timber merchant a few miles away from me that sells exotic timbers. The name is GT Morrison, but I've never actually been there. I hope to go there at some point in future, but at the moment I've got quite a lot of wood so I've no need to buy any really. If I get some sort of commission in future where I need to buy a larger supply of a specific type of wood, then I'll probably check it out. And when I do, I'll probably take my camera with me so that you can check it out too. Building an external garden room. That was fast. Reuben's, Reu, Reuben's Woodcraft asks what? Reuben's, Reuben's Woodcraft. 
Reuben, 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 Reuben. Hello. 